Welcome to test chamber four. Yeah. But today, resin printers. These things have been getting incredibly cheap and really good lately. They're not quite as convenient or safe to use as filament printers. And the other thing that usually comes up is, isn't the resin like super brittle and weak? So that's what we're going to find out today. Uh, you've probably seen my Philoene testing series where I've put a few dozen different filaments through their paces and I've used the same tests for the Elegoo ABS-like clear red resin and the Prusa Maroon tough resin. And to have a reference to compare against, we've also got Dust Filament PLA and their PTG in the mix, which were two consistent performers in the original Philoene series. I've already done the testing on the filament and resin prints, as you can see by the pile of broken test prints in front of me. And well, there, there were quite a few surprises in here. Hey, uh, make sure you're getting subscribed, by the way, if you're interested in these sorts of tests. If there's interest in this type of video, I'll keep making more of them. So how did I test these? First, usually I print the Philoene test files with normal print settings, meaning they would be printed with shells and infill at normal layer heights that you'd typically be using. The key difference with resin prints now is that they don't really have that concept of, of infill, at least for most slicers, so I printed them completely solid. To keep it fair, I also printed the PLA and PTG parts with a 100% infill. And with all these materials, I did absolutely zero tuning. I used the stock profile for the SL1 that comes with Prusa Slicer for their tough resin, and then used the exact same print files for the Elegoo clear resin as well. For the PLA and PTG, I used the Prusa PLA and Prusa PTG settings with their defaults on a Mark III. Usually for the Philoene tests, I'd tune temperatures and flow rates, but since I'm not doing any tuning for the SLA prints, I wanted to keep it fair and stick with untuned profiles for the filament prints as well. We'll be doing four tests on each material. A rigidity test, a bend strength test, an impact test, and a pull test. Some of these tests are inspired by the actual engineering standards, like this one, uh, but since I don't have the means to do any of them 100% to spec, I'm instead focusing on getting meaningful test results in some more custom setups to give you a realistic idea of how well these materials would perform in a real world application. So let's get started with the first one, the bend test, these guys. Uh, for this one, I've got these testing sticks that come down to a 10 by 10 millimeter cross section with some beveled edges. It goes into a rigid holder, where's that thing? There it is, on one side, and on the other end, exactly 100 millimeters out, it's got this loop that um, I can hook my trusty luggage scale into, and that is going to show me at what weight or how much force I need to apply to finally snap our specimen here. So let's start with the PLA and the PTG. Since filament prints have actual layers, I've got two parts each. One printed standing up, so that we're testing layer adhesion, uh, the other printed laying flat to test material strength. For layer adhesion, the PLA holds just under 8 kilograms, the PTG 5.9. Testing the material strength itself with the part printed flat, we saw 16.6 .6 kilograms for PLA and a did not fail for PTG. Because PTG is a bit softer than PLA and when you keep it dry, is actually very tough and not brittle at all, it simply stretches a bit and moves on with its stay. I think that's a fantastic property to have in 3D prints that need to be tough. For the resins, I've only got a single test file or test print for each one, because we don't have to worry about layer adhesion in resin prints as it's all one consistent piece of material. The Prusa Tough Resin breaks at 9.7 kilograms, the Elegoo at 10.5, so both resins are stronger than the filament prints when tested for layer adhesion, but are weaker with the filament prints aligned with the direction of the layers. So what's interesting here is that all these parts actually failed in exactly the same way, at least for the, for the ones that were printed flat. They've got a straight break and then, I don't know, a, this, this peeled or sheared off part at the bottom. I'm just going to say that that speaks for the consistency of the setup, but it's probably just a result of how these parts are held up at a slight angle to keep them uh, 
from sliding out, so these are tilted slightly upwards. Next, let's check out how rigid these materials are. A softer material will usually perform better in the strength tests and in the real world as well, because it can distribute load over a wider cross section by slightly stretching and conforming without breaking. For example, glass should actually be a very strong material, but because it can't conform to loads, it still ends up breaking super easily. Yes, I know, that's, that's a simplification. So, for the tests, I printed these springs for each material, and I'm hanging a one kilogram spool, or roughly one kilogram spool of filament uh, from them to see how far they stretch. These springs are not linear, um, but it, that is intentionally designed that way, so that I could get results for anything from a carbon fiber filled PTG to a super elastic TPU with that same model. So for PLA, we get a stretch of 14 millimeters. For PTG, it's 18 millimeters. Elegoo resin ends up at 19 and the Prusa Tough at 26. I think I have an explanation for these results, but we'll get to that in the end. For now, let's just keep in mind that PLA is actually the most rigid material out of these. Elegoo resin and PTG are basically identical and Prusa resin is much softer. Next, what I call the pull test. These are elongated rings, um, once printed upright, at least for the filaments, and once laying flat. Uh, and the flat ones are actually only half as thick, uh, because otherwise, well, I wouldn't be able to break them. I figured that out the hard way. Let's get started with PLA again. The first thicker layer adhesion test broke at 16.5 kilograms, the thinner layer strength test at 20.75 kilograms, which, if it were the same thickness, would be 41.5 kilograms. That's pretty good for such a small piece of material. But it's easily bested by PTG, which achieves 24.5 kilograms printed standing up, and an impressive equivalent of 70.8 kilograms when printed flat. We can again see that uh, the PTG prints stretch and deform a lot before breaking, which gives them much of their strength. Moving on to the resins, uh, there is only one test part again, as it would be really hard to remove a flat test piece uh, from an SLA bed, but also again, it's not necessary to test different orientations, as the resin should be an almost perfectly isotropic material. As I tested the sample with Prusa Tough resin, I was pretty surprised to see that it almost immediately ripped at the bottom of the loop, even though the brim that I had left on the resin prints should have helped with that specifically. It only achieved 6.7 kilograms before it failed. The Elegoo resin is much better here, managing 38 kilograms, which again is much better than the layer adhesion tests for the filament prints, but a bit weaker than both PLA and PTG when it tested those along their layers. All right, stop. Hammer time. This last test I think is the most fun one. We get stuff flying around everywhere, every single sample will break in here, and I get to swing a hammer. This is actually the test that is the closest to the proper way of doing it, and if you want to look up the exact specs, it's the Izot Impact Strength Test. We use a sample that is again 10 by 10 millimeters, but it has a notch in the center that makes it break in that one exact spot. Then we hit it with a swinging weight and measure how far it swings back up after it has destroyed the sample. Right there. I captured this on camera and do that uh, evaluation digitally. You can see the scale right here, obviously, if it swings up all the way again to up there, our sample has absorbed absolutely no energy from the hammer at all while breaking. If it gets stopped right here, it has absorbed everything. So, depending on how far it swings back up, we can measure how tough a material is, and that's going to impact how well it handles blows and impacts. Yeah. Uh, three tests for filament prints. Again, one testing layer adhesion printed like that, then one tested with the notch printed up top so we get interrupted layers, and one printed with the notch on the side to get continuous layers. With resin, again, there's just a single test orientation. Now, one thing I noticed is that the resin prints actually came out oversized by about 1%, while the filament prints were either spot on or slightly undersized, which meant the filament prints fit perfectly into the holder, while the resin prints ended up getting stuck pretty hard. But it was just a quick fix with a drill to make that work. Now, results, starting with PLA again. Predictably, the sample printed to test layer adhesion was the weakest, at just 90 millijoules absorbed. 
than the flat sample with the interrupted layers at 350 millijoules and the sideways part with a continuous shell at 390 millijoules. PTG performed slightly better at 110, 350 and 480 millijoules. Prusa tough resin again was surprisingly weak at just 280 millijoules, but Eligu resin ended up at 650. Because of the way the Philoene scoring weighs these results by how significant they are in the overall performance of the material, that gives the Prusa resin a total impact rating comparable to PLA, mostly because there is no layer adhesion weakness, while the Eligu resin is about comparable to the better ABS grades, and ABS is specifically known for being a high impact strength material. That's again a pretty good showing for the Eligu resin and does sort of confirm the ABS-like uh, sticker they actually put on this bottle. So if you look at the overall weighted strength rating that are usually calculated for filaments in the Philoene tests, again those combine the measurements into a total score in a way that I think makes sense, and yes I have adjusted these scores for being 100% uh, infill parts. For the Prusa resin we get a score on the lower end of what PLA typically manages, more in the neighborhood of some of the biomaterial filled filaments like extruded BDP or some of the Algex filaments. It's still probably strong enough for you know most things you'd want to do, but after seeing the numbers it would not be my first choice for parts that need to be structural. The Eligu resin clearly outperforms the Prusa resin here and is on par with the dust filament PTG I tested. Its score is on the higher end of what PLA can achieve and starts inching into what I'd call you know, high performance materials if it were a filament. Just to give you an idea of how these filaments typically score, on the low end, under 40, you have a bunch of weird filaments. Then 40 to 80 is general PLAs on the mid and low end of that, and PTGs on the higher end of that, and then above that score we get stuff like Tallman's PCTPE, which is as close to indestructible as I've seen. I've also reprinted all these parts at a 75% scale, thinking I wouldn't be able to break uh, the full scale parts printed at 100% infill, but that wasn't the case. Still, I retested everything with these smaller prints, but got the exact same results. So that's good that this stuff is consistent. Two notes on the resins used. I cured them in the Prusa CW1, because that gives very consistent results, since it's basically running through a programmed curing cycle. I had it on drying plus curing which heats up the parts first to evaporate the IPA from washing, then warm cures them. Now the Eligu resin stayed like rubbery even after curing, so this, this doesn't feel totally dry, but I'm sure that it is properly cured. I tried on another part and it didn't feel any better to the touch even after a second round of curing. The Eligu resin is a clear resin with a red tint, while the Prusa is, you know, completely opaque. Perhaps and this is just pure speculation at this point, perhaps because it's an opaque resin it doesn't cure as deeply and even though it feels dry and cured to the surface, much more cured actually than the Eligu resin feels, it might still be under cured on the inside, simply because the UV light can't reach that deeply into the part, which would explain the overall weaker performance as well as the fact that the Prusa Tough resin ended up much softer than the other material. But that requires more testing for sure. Also when we look at our filament, this wasn't the highest spec filament possible. The PLA is what TAS filament called B+, so filament that other manufacturers would just throw out because it either isn't a full spool or in most cases is the transition between two colors, which is why some of my samples are kind of a natural PLA and some are more of a gray. It should still have the same material properties and consistency as normal filament, and usually it does, but there's no guarantee for that. I use that because it's probably more representative of an average run-of-the-mill filament, you know, a bit more than just highest perfectly specced filament. And the PTG, also dust filament, is a type that has never made it to market. Dust Filament and me tried to make another custom color like the Tom's 3D Infinity Blue and this is a prototype of Slag Violet, which is a really cool like purple or violet uh, PTG with black particles in it and it looks awesome, especially when you put some light behind it, but the particles made it nearly impossible to manufacture consistently because they tended to stick out the side of the filament as little bumps and you can actually feel those um, and obviously that's not too great for production. 
Still, the few spools that I have of this stuff uh, should have the same spec as a regular filament. But in either case, you could get much stronger prints, especially when it comes to the layer adhesion, by just cranking a print temperature and flow rate. For the actual filoene test, I always calibrated for that, but in this case, again, I want it to be as real world as possible. And I mean, let's be honest, how many folks out there actually calibrate every single filament they use? So that is the testing resin versus filament for now. To recap, many of the resins we have today, even the cheaper ones, actually outperform filaments, even if it's just for the fact that there are no layer adhesion issues. But there seems to be a pretty wide range of how exactly a resin can perform based on the resin itself and also on how you print and post-process it. In either case, I don't think it's fair to just assume that all resins are brittle and weak, because as we've seen, they can be very strong competitors. Yeah. <laughs> so to, to finish this off, you can find links to this stuff below, However, none to Amazon.com because they just kicked me out of their affiliate program. Isn't that great? Uh, you know, maybe it's time to give Matter Hackers a shot. They've got a bunch of resins for this sort of stuff as well. Links below. Also, an extra special shout out to all my patrons and YouTube members. Without your support, this entire Amazon thing would hurt even more. One particular shout out I missed a few times is Sean Berry. So thank you for your support. But as a tip, if you're supporting the channel on Patreon, make sure you actually pick a tier so that you can get access to the monthly hangouts and are included in the shoutouts. But that's it for today. Thank you all for watching, especially you guys who just got subscribed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Congratulations. The test is now over.